I feel like embedded in the DNA of many gamers my age, which it's about 40, um, many of us fondly remember G4 TV. Um, I can't even say the name without putting a smile on my face because I really liked what the network stood for early on. And it was a really cool haven for people like me who were really into gaming. And it was a great avenue to kind of all come together in a weird type of way. We all kind of bonded over video game news and culture. And although gaming was definitely picking up a lot of momentum then, I would say still in the early 2000s, gamers weren't really considered cool. Although I don't know if you could say I'm personally cool. But we weren't really considered kind of, we hadn't made it yet. It was still kind of like a small fringe of the population. Granted, a lot of console launches helped that. And I would say by definitely late 2000, like 2010, right? That's when gaming blew up and became known for, you know, these elaborate events. And it definitely was targeted by many people as, oh, wow, this is actually a real thing. But for a long time, I feel like us gamers kind of waned a little bit. G4 TV, I think, to me at least, was one of those outlets that um, I think really helped kind of solidify the universe in gaming at least a little bit. So kind of excited that finally we are getting um, a new announcement. I wish I could hide this banner, but I can't. Um, G4 has finally got a launch date of November 16th, 2021. It's launching on Twitch, Philo, Xfinity TV, Cox, and Verizon Fios. Uh, they released a little bit of a press statement, but basically what they say is, we're coming, we're a pioneer for video games, and um, you know, and this is, the, this is what I was trying to get across for sure. G4 was a pioneer for video games on television for 12 years, long before businesses were focused on gaming. That credibility comes um, and it cannot be manufactured. And I 100% agree with that. As we gear up for launch, we're excited to unlock our portfolio of talent, uh, their marketing platforms, businesses, etc. Um, they go on to say some of the things that they will be bringing back, including Attack of the Show, X Play, uh, Boosted, Ninja Warrior, which I kind of roll my eyes at, ESL Gaming and a Dungeons and Dragons limited series. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to me. There I am. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about this because I am obviously a gamer. If you know anything about me personally or professionally on YouTube, all I talk about is gaming. It's, it's my life. That's, that's what I live for. I play games every day. I'm always wearing gaming shirts. Our house is decorated in gaming stuff. That's just the kind of person I am. So this naturally appeals to me just as a gamer is yet another kind of solidified way for all of us to get together. And I'm excited for it. When G4 launched many, many, many years ago, um, it was definitely very raw. There were a lot of shows on there that didn't have a lot of polish at all. They only had three or four original shows that would just play in infinite loop over and over and over again. So it's kind of like you could tune in whenever you wanted. They didn't necessarily have like a daily drum beat on stuff. Um, and it was exciting because it was clear the people that were talking about the games were passionate gamers. It never felt like it was a corporate suit or a pretty face that they hired to stand up and try to make gaming sound more or less than it was. The people that talked about it were legitimate gamers and in the conversations they had, in the interviews that they did, and in their limited social media presence. Remember, we didn't have a lot of this Facebook. I think we had MySpace back then still, honestly. Um, Twitter did not exist yet, or if it did, nobody used it. Facebook was still in its infancy. A lot of it was still kind of based on just college admission only. Um, the, the little bit we saw these people outside of G4, they were clearly gamers, wearing gamer shirts, talking about gaming, playing gaming, and you got the sense that these people legitimately cared. And I think that's what carried the network for a very long time because the shows themselves were sometimes a little rough around the edges. Um, I remember a show that they just only showed uh, in-game cinematics, which was very interesting. 
they had a show on uh, cheat, on how to like put in cheat codes and like strategies on how to play games. The flagship show, of course, was um, X Play. That was the one that I think everybody really remembers. And I know that that kind of happened after the merge with Tech TV. And I talk about them interchangeably when G4 and Tech TV merged because they merged very early on in the infancy of G4. Um, you know, G4TV.com and then Attack of the Show. Those were kind of the big pillars for a while. Um, as the network progressed, it got more zany and more pop culture-y. And that's ultimately, I think, what met its demise was that you didn't necessarily have people focusing on gaming anymore. Gaming wasn't the focus. It was more pop culture and excitement. And unfortunately, a lot of the nitty-gritty, nerdy gaming stuff took a back seat. Then it got very weird at the very end with a lot of filler. Um, I remember turning it on and there would be, the entire night would be reruns of Ninja Warrior, which is why I'm groaning my eyes at this new announcement, as well as Cops. They had a lot of Cops, then they had like Campus PD. And I'm like, this has nothing to do with video gaming. And by then they had kind of rebranded themselves into like a male network. So you know, young males would watch this, not necessarily gamers, um, gender neutral there, but it was really tailored towards this young male demographic. Me being a young male at the time, I'm middle aged now, um, I did not appreciate what they were showing. I quit watching. And ultimately, uh, according to Wikipedia, they died a slow death in uh, late October, I believe. They have an official date. Um, January 6, 2014 is when it officially died. Um, and ever since then, there has been a large gap, I think, of um, kind of a central place that really kind of embodied what G4 originally was. Yes, you have IGN, you have GameSpot, you have your individual Twitch creators you follow, like Tim the Tatman or Shroud or Summit or Doc. You know, you have people that are still playing games, talking about the culture pushing the narrative in a different direction, and I like that. But they all put their own distinct flair and spin on things, and they typically stovepipe to a very specific audience. When you have a show like, not a show, when you have like IGN, a big corporation, they're definitely geared much more towards making money and revenue, and as a result of that, sometimes their opinions are a little watered down. They definitely cater to advertisers and sponsors, and it's clear on their webpage with the banners on the sides and the borders and any video you click on, there's always some sort of promotional material associated with it. It's hard to take what they say seriously, and I know they and others, not just IGN, have defended saying that, well, the advertisement branch is different than the... Um, the actual execution branch, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're totally independent of each other, but you can't tell me that they haven't written a bad review in marketing said, hey, you can't piss off our sponsor and they've, they've toned it back. I, I know that happens. Um, so I hope that what G4 can bring back to the table is kind of a neutral position on gaming um, very similar to what Jeff Keighley did many, many moons ago when he did a YouTube gaming series. If you remember that, and I really liked that show. It was, uh, I think he only did like 10 episodes. But basically it was, a, it was a collaboration with Jeff Keighley and YouTube. And he would bring on influencers and they would do three or four topics of the night. Uh, one of the hot topics at the time was No Man's Sky. Um, I don't know if you guys remember No Man's Sky came out and it was an atrocious game. Um, and they had people, you know, famous people like Angry Joe and Jack Septicai and other famous influencers talking about it very candidly with Jeff Keighley and they weren't holding punches. And I like that. I appreciated that candor and I appreciated that aggression. Not to say that the network needs to bully people. But they spoke what everybody was saying, and it reminded me of the roots of G4, where it's like, hey, we have gamers talking about games again. We've, we've broken away from that corporate policy. So I'm really hopeful that when G4 launches later this year, um, they can pull that off. I, I really hope that they can get back to those roots of, hey, we're going to say what we really mean, and I think we're going to influence 
gaming in a way, a positive way, by not shying away from marketing. Now, of course, money makes the world go round, and I read a list of their sponsors, Twitch being the biggest one. So they're gonna be probably bombarding us with advertisements, and today's game segment is brought to you by Doritos or whatever, you know how that stuff goes. I know that's gonna happen, but I'm hopeful that the sponsorship deals they procure are not necessarily tied to gaming, and I think that is gonna be their key to success. I think they can remain independent and they can remain true to that original gaming spirit that I saw way back when in 2002 if they can get enough people watching and get sponsorships of maybe even peripherals or something. But if I see a segment that is like sponsored by Call of Duty Vanguard, you know as well as I do, they're not gonna talk negatively about the game, which by the way, Everybody is talking negatively about the game except for those big box websites because they're being paid to promote the game itself and they're showing off the collector's editions and they're showing off the cinematic trailers and the pre-order bonuses and all that wonderful stuff. So they can't badmouth the game if they're getting money from it. That's why I say that there's always going to be a conflict of interest there. So I think G4 is positioning itself with a lot of nostalgia, which is good. The list of shows that they have presented so far seem interesting. I hope they don't go down this rabbit hole once again of having lots and lots of stupid rerun shows. They have said they do want to be a 24-hour network again, which worries me that there's a lot of filler. I would almost prefer more episodic type things just initially maybe just like an hour long thing on youtube or something but understanding that if you're going to be a network network does mean around the clock programming it doesn't mean a youtube channel i am not a network i just do a video and sometimes there's content sometimes they're not um if they can really elaborate this and get back to like those little two minute burner commercials in between shows where they're like, hey, here's the latest announcements, here's what's trending on Twitter, here's what we're playing today, whatever, to keep it going, to keep people engaged in between some of the other lulls and programming, I think they have a good shot. Unfortunately, it's been a long time since they've been here, a very long time since they've been here, and the world has changed very radically. Um, people demand, people want things on demand and they actually do demand things on demand too. Um, but people really want to get a, uh, very quick responses of stuff. Um, people's attention spans is greatly diminished. And also there are so many content creators out there now that people have found established families in those discords, in those chats, uh, with specific content creators where they feel very connected and I think it's going to be hard to pull those people away. Um, I wouldn't use the word cult because that's obviously somewhat derogatory but it's definitely clear to me as somebody who doesn't really associate with any one brand over another. um, You definitely can see stovepipes and you go on the reddits of these particular groups And if you say anything bad about what you saw or any constructive feedback about what you saw or whatever, you are quickly banished, ostracized, and downvoted to the bottom of the list. Um, This is the culture that G4 is going to be entering, which again goes back to if they can play to a broader audience, I think they can win some people back. And I hope so. I really want this to succeed. I think they've done everything right. They've definitely aligned themselves with people who are definitely into gaming. I hope that this is not just a jumping off platform for many of these people, very similar to things we see on IGN, where somebody will come into uh, fruition as a established journalist or as an established content creator only to leave and go do their own thing. I cannot tell you the countless number of times I've seen that happen. So I hope that even though they do have some star talent kind of to build up their resume, I hope at the same time they are bringing in people who are relatively nobody that are known for being G4 hosts, just like what we saw last time, that will be established in names of the brand that will carry credence. Um, There are a lot of old timers out there that are still kicking, that still do quality content. Adam Sessler, definitely one of those names. Um, 
I think his opinions are usually spot on and he doesn't hold back punches, particularly on his personal social media account. So I'm hopeful he brings that same kind of fire with him to the show. And I hope that it's not watered down and I hope the content remains fresh. We'll see what happens. Um, It's going to be exciting. Um, There's going to be a lot going on at the end of this year with some major game releases. It'll be very interesting to see how they tie into that. Their partnership with the Esports League, I think, is also a very key thing. I'll be curious to see how that plays in, if it's just simulcasts of other stuff or if they have some sort of original programming to tie into Esports. There have been some really good productions as of late on Esports. Um, Unfortunately, no one really knows about them, but some phenomenal StarCraft tournaments where you know they interview the players, they break down the plays. It feels like you're watching a professional sporting event, which you could argue if esports is a sport or not. But you know that production quality when you watch an NBA or an NFL game, when they show the replays and they break it down and they have color commentators explaining different plays and what are you seeing and what do they need to do to win. They offer that now. It's hard to find. I think if G4 can become the home of that type of content without being too watered down, I also think they have a shot. So I'm very, very passionate. I'm very, very excited. I want G4 to succeed. I want that network to remain important in the next couple of years. I think there's definitely a place for it. The question is, can they pull it off? And I, like so many others, will be waiting with anticipation. I hope you guys found this deep dive, look at, thought process of G4 interesting and informative. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.